Welcome to Mr. Woods Teaches. I'm Fred Woods, ready to teach. Hi fellow mathematicians. Today we're going to be reviewing possible questions you might encounter on a, an equivalent fractions test. Let's take a look and see what you might encounter. Hi friends, this is Mr. Woods and we're going to continue looking at fractions today. Part of that is what, what can you expect on a test or, or an assessment of some sort? Well, let's take a look at this here. It says use the model to write an equivalent fraction. Well, let's evaluate what this model is. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that's a 12 by 6 matrix, but it's divided into pieces. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, by six, so there's six pieces, but there's one, two, three, four that are shaded in. This is telling me that this is probably going to be a fraction. Why we have a fraction up here? So let's write that down. Okay, so I have four of six pieces uh, shaded in, and we can see that. But what could? How can we modify this matrix to show uh, an equivalent fraction? Well, we can divide it even further, this, or we can go backwards. Let's go backwards. So if I take out this line here, and this line here, and this line here, those partitions, let's take a look and see how that looks. So here we have the U matrix without those other lines in it. So now we have one, two, three. They are equivalent because it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 12. 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's exactly the same. It's just that two of three pieces are shaded in. To explain this, let's take a look. Let's go back here. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4 of 6 are shaded. Just write out 4 of 6 parts are shaded. And if I divide that first fraction at 4, 6, so 4, 6 by 2, we will get so 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. What that means is that two parts of this shaded is equal to four parts of this shaded. That's it for this one. Go to the next problem. This is a little bit different. Let's take a look. Let's evaluate this. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we're trying to figure this one out. So right now I have three fourths of this matrix. I have 1, 2, 3 shaded. So three fourths of this matrix shaded. And let's take a look at the next part. How can we create an equivalent fraction? Okay, now notice it's exactly the same size 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 so what i did is i drew a line down the middle here that's breaking it up into 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 pieces and i can draw that as my denominator and then my numerator is 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 eighths now how can we Look at this and go, wait a minute, same or equivalent. Well, what I can do is I can say we can take first image has three parts of four, or so I'm going to say three parts of four shaded. And so I, and I can show that as three fourths. So if I multiply by this three parts of four, so that would be three fourths by two over two. That's going to equal so three times two is six, and four times two is eight. So that's how we can go back and forth. We can it was six eighths on the on the left, and we're trying to create a divide by two, divide two over two, and get three fourths. I want you to think about factors when you're trying to create equivalent fractions. 
go to the next problem. So this says here, tell whether the fractions are equivalent, right, equal or not equal. Notice how that not equal has that equal sign with a slash to it. That means it's not equal. Well, let's evaluate this. So 8 tenths and 4 fifths. And I know that 4 is a factor of 8 and 5 is a factor of 10. So if I did, I went in there and said, okay, I'm going to multiply. I'm going to use dot as multiply 2 over 2. 2 times 4 is 8, and 2 times 5 is 10. So that is definitely equal. And I can explain that right here. I just explained it. So it's, they are because when you multiply 4 fifths times 1, that's, that's at 2 over 2, that equals 8 tenths. Let's take a look at this one here. So I know that 2 is a factor of 12. Okay. I would have to multiply 2 times 6 is 12. If I do so 2 times 6 equals 12. But if I do the same thing here, because I have to do it so it's U times 1, so 6 over 6, 6 times 1 is, is not equal to 7. So I know that that is not equal. When multiply 1 half times 6 over 6, that equals 6 twelfths, which does not equal 7 twelfths. See that how that explanation is? It's going to be pretty much similar for all of them going down. So I'm not going to continue with this. If you want to uh, pause the video and go through these others, I'm going to give you a moment. So go ahead and pause the video to do that. Okay, welcome back. Let's take a look at these as well. Let's just say, okay, I know 3 is a factor of 6. And I have to multiply 2 times that, so 3 times 2 equals 6, 2 times 2 is equal, so they equal. Let's look at this one here, 5 eighths. This, this is kind of uh, self-evident, because if I, if I multiply this by 2, I always start out with 2, you know, unless you know the other factors that's going on there. So let's take a look at this, five, 5 times 2 is equal to 10, and 8 times 2 is equal to 16, so that's not it. If I look at this, I can divide, let's see, if I divide by 2, I get 4.5, and this is 5, but it, it's just not working, so definitely not equal. Now, this is a little more interesting. Again, it's, we have this large fraction. You're going, oh no, Mr. Woods, how can I do this? Well, one thing, let's simplify that. That's just going to be 2 tenths, right? 2 times 1, if I do... 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 5 is 10, so they're definitely equal. So there's different ways to look at it. See how I canceled out those zeros? You could have gone over here and said, well, you know, 20 uh, times 1 is equal to 20, and uh, 20 times 5 is equal to 100. You go back and wait. I try to find the simplest way. So there's, these are just different ways to show how to make things that are, find the equivalency and such. So they're definitely equal. Math tests will have word problems. This says here, answer the question, then explain your answer. Well, let's read the question. Gina finished five-sixths of her homework. Kai finished three-fourths of his homework. And Tate finished ten-twelfths of their homework. Which two students finished the same amount of homework? Well, one way to look at this is to try to figure out what, what do you need to know and where do you need to go and how do you need to do it? Let's take a look at that. So I created this of a graphic organizer you can do this on your own as well on the test or on scratch paper however you want to do it that's what do i need to find what information do i need to use and how will i use that information those are the three different pieces that you need to figure out so i want you to pause this write this out and try to fill in the blanks before i move forward welcome back so let's take a look at this what do i need to find i'm looking for who has had the same amount of homework Completed. So that's going to be who completed the equivalent amount or equivalent fractions of homework completed. Abbreviated there. So the equivalent fractions. What information do I need to use? Fractions of homework. So it's going to be fractions. I'm not going to spell it all out. How will I use the information? Well, there's different ways to do this. You can do the equations out. I'd like to say you make a table. Let's just make this table. Uh, to find equivalent fractions. So now that we have identified what we want to find, 
what information to use and how to find that information, how to use that information to find the answer. I can, I want to go over here. I'm going to make that table. So I'm going to draw a couple of lines here. Have this. So let's see here. I have Gina, T for Gina, K for Kai, and T for Tate. And Gina, so this is the original. This is where we're starting at. As if we were multiplying each one by one, two, three. Let's take a look at this. So I have five, six. There's five, six. Kai had three fours. And Tate had ten twelves. Now I'm multiplying. I, in some instances, I might be dividing by these numbers. But today I am going to multiply because I'm thinking that because I'm looking here saying that there might be some factors that are in common because six is a common factor of twelve and four is a common factor of twelve as well. So let's take a look. So, so I would write this out as five six times and use that dot two over two, which is just as if I'm multiplying by one, that equals, that's going to give me 10 twelfths. Now I could stop here, but I want to show you uh, all the pieces because right there there's 10 twelfths and 10 twelfths. So now I know that Gina and Tate have the same. If they were a little bit more difficult, I would continue on. So it'd be three fourths times two over two, and that's going to give me six over eight, and I have 10 twelfths. And that's 20, 24. So there's a larger range between these. I would have to continue multiplying out or dividing out. But create these tables, create your own graphic organizer. There's no way that your teacher's gonna say, oh, you shouldn't do that. I want you to find the, the way to figure this out as quickly as possible that makes sense to you. Until next time, this is Mr. Wiz Teaches. Thank you for watching Mr. Wiz Teaches. Remember, to be a mathematician, all you have to be is a person that does math. Like, share, and subscribe, and make your day great.